Good day everybody and once again we are back um, and yeah we're still discussing that November 2020 paper uh, of course in preparation for your exams you know so that you know how to approach each section right and I'm sure you've learned quite a bit uh, we've got you know just uh, videos that have just full details of what we are actually covering now so yeah if you are new or you haven't been part of the family please subscribe to our channel uh, so that you can be notified and please uh, the notifications button as well uh, so that you can be aware every time we are posting a new lesson right um, and um, please for those of you who may be struggling or you know need assistance with mathematics or physical science uh, you're more than welcome to also get in touch with us and by the way that's for all grades um, you know uh, um, you know, uh, uh, any grade that you may be struggling uh, with that, um, the, yeah, of course, uh, the other grades wouldn't really be watching this now, <laughs> would they? But of course, you can recommend us to, you know, all your, you know, brothers and sisters, cousins, and so on. All right. So, um, uh, so you can get in touch with us on the email address info at mlungesingosi.co.za. All right, so I just, uh, without any further ado, want to just get uh, going with this question. Really an easy section, this one, um, that's electrodynamics. So let's just have a look at it quickly. So they said a simplified diagram of an electrical machine is shown below. Okay, they asking, is this electrical machine a DC motor or a DC generator? Okay, so I want you to please note, we've got a battery there that is connected, right? So already this is telling us that we are converting electrical energy to mechanical energy. So definitely that should be a motor. OK, right. Um, and they say write down the energy conversion that takes place whilst this machine is in operation. Of course, uh, uh, we are looking at converting electrical energy to mechanical energy, as, as we rightfully said. I know if you want me to write that down. Uh, right, so we said this is a DC motor, okay, um, and we said we are converting um, the electrical energy to mechanical energy, okay, right, and then they say write down the component, the name of uh, component A in the diagram, okay, so in this case, this would be our split rings, right? So 9.1.3, those are split rings. And basically what this tells us is that this is a DC motor, okay? If we had slip rings, then we'd know that we'd be dealing with AC. Okay, but um, yeah, so 9.1.4. As I said, this is quite an easy section, ladies and gents. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched our videos and you're still struggling with this section, please just go and watch that. I promise you it will cure all your ailments when it comes to this section. Okay, right. So um, they say, all right, so in which direction will the coil uh, shown in the diagram rotate or oh, above rotate? Right. Will it be clockwise or anti-clockwise? All right. So now this is the uh, painful part. Okay, so... <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if I just pick, all right, I'm just going to focus on this side here, right? So if I look in, on this side, let's call this A and let's call that B, okay? So if I move from A to B, if you note your current, your current would actually be, you know, we always consider conventional current, we move from our positive side. So our current on side AB is moving in that direction, okay? Now, because this is the motor, we always use, we, for, a, for a motor, we use uh, the left-hand rule, right? So that means, first of all, I want you to please note, um, we say that the forefinger shows us the direction of the field, and field is always moving from north to south. Here's the north side of my magnet, there's the south, so there's my left hand. So it means that my first finger or my uh, forefinger is pointing in the direction of the field, right? Remember, we place them at right hand to each other, right? And then I can see that the current is moving. Uh, remember, it's the second finger shows me the current. 
so there's my field there is the current now look at the you know the thumb the thumb is actually facing downwards right so there's the current there's my field there so uh, in this case it means that if you were to think about this as a you know a flat panel like that it means on this side now remember we took uh, there's the field there's the current so it means that uh, in this case on this side it's being pushed downwards like that okay so as a result how would it rotate it would actually end up rotating in that direction like that so it would be anti uh, clockwise okay so the answer there should be anti clockwise okay right and then um so um of course if this was a generator of course you would be looking at it uh look uh, using the right hand rule isn't it okay so let's get to uh, 9.2.1 now they say to you um uh, an electrical device is marked 200 watts and 220 volts now, um, you know, people keep asking me, uh, how do you know whether you've got maximum or you've got uh, average power or whatever? But please note, when they give us power, we will always assume it to be average power unless the examiner specifies otherwise. Okay. Similarly with voltage in this section. Okay. If it's Vmax, usually it's either the, the, the examiner will tell us specifically the maximum voltage or um, in this case, it will be given in the form of a graph, right? And, you know, you'll see that the peak in that graph there uh, would be actually the, the, the maximum value. So if they give you the, the sine wave, let's say for an AC or for a DC, so in that case, it means that if they give you this value here, that would be the maximum right so it means that if they did not say that we assume it to be the rms voltage okay right so um now they say define the term rms voltage okay so please remember that the rms voltage is the um voltage okay um that is equivalent rather to the dc voltage okay so it means in an AC uh, source, right, it would be the equivalent voltage to um, the, yeah, the, the DC equivalent, okay. So in this case, uh, we've got 9.2.2, okay. Uh, they say uh, calculate the resistance of the device, okay. So we want to know what would be the resistance. Now, remember, what are we given? We're given the power, we got, we've got the resistance. So I'm going to go for P average is equal to V RMS squared divided by R. Okay, I'm choosing this one because of what I'm given and what I want. So we've got 200 watts. Okay, V RMS is 220 squared, uh, uh, squared and we are looking for the resistance there. And of course, uh, what we're going to do is just... Uh, so this will be 200 R is equals to 220 squared. And then we can find the value of R there. Okay. Right. So let's find that value. Now answer is 242. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So the next question, they say this device is now connected to a 150 volt AC source. Okay, now I want you to please consider, uh, of course, if you change the voltage, it's going to affect the power, right? But what doesn't change is the resistance of the device. Okay, so uh, we now connect it to a 150 AC source. So we want to know that they say calculate the energy dissipated by the device in 10 minutes. Now, um, remember that when we talk about power power is the rate at which work is done so it's energy divided by the change in time okay and and by the way you've got that uh, formula okay so uh, remember power is energy divided by time and by the way this and that are exactly the same thing right it's just that here you are talking about rms and so on okay 
so that's energy divided by time however I want the energy so that means that we need to first determine the power okay so let's do that we've got the new voltage uh, which is um, uh, you know 150 okay remember so you've got that new voltage which is 150 there and remember we still have the resistance so let's say uh, the, uh, this, uh, the power P average is going to be V RMS squared over R so this is going to be um, 150 squared divided by 242 um, and in this case 150 squared divided by 242 and I get a power value of 92.9 okay I'll say 98 watts okay it makes sense the power has decreased uh, because the voltage has decreased okay so now we are not looking for um, uh, power but we're looking for energy so it means that power will be energy divided by change in time uh, but I've got my power which is 92.98 okay I want the energy and the time is 10 minutes right now remember that when we consider time here we always use time in seconds so 10 minutes remember there are 60 seconds in a minute so it means I'll say 10 minutes but in 10 minutes I've got 60 seconds in a minute so in this case it will be 10 times 60 so the total energy that would be dissipated okay will be that value multiplied by 600 okay and I get a, uh, an energy value of 55785.12 and remember energy is measured in joules okay so um, that is how this cookie crumbles as I said this is quite an easy section ladies and gents please don't waste time on it um, you know just make sure just watch that video if you uh, uh, you still find some uh, you've got some questions okay and make sure that you can ace this section okay otherwise I'll see you guys next time right shop shop